Hi, it's Steve Hargadon, and this is the final day of the 2017 Global Education Conference. Mm -hmm. This is our penultimate keynote session. Jennifer Williams is here. Say hi, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. What a history you have with this conference, Jennifer. So fun to be having your keynote mm -hmm. this year. Thanks to terrific sponsor, Participate, Cutter Foundation, Digital Promise, Taking It Global. These fine folks have helped to make this wonderful grassroots worldwide event possible. Those of you who are participating live now get to indicate on the map your location. Look to the left of the map. You're looking for the star icon. Click on it twice. Click on the map. Some of these, it's so fun to know that that's Govinda in Nepal, and it's Thomas in Guam, and it's Maisie in Israel. And it's Maria in Panama. But, but shout out in the chat. Let us know something about where you are, the time and the temperature, the weather. In this increasingly less disconnected world. A lot of fun. A lot of fun, Jennifer, to think of the friendships that have been built over years here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna keep, we're gonna move past this map to give Jennifer as much time as possible, but keep notes going in the chat. And Jennifer, the time is yours. Wonderful. Thank you, Steve, so much, and thank you too to Lucy. Steve and Lucy have just been such wonderful support systems for me as I've grown and developed as a global educator over the years, and and I'll share a little bit about that as well. Um, but good day to everyone here. It's, it's amazing for me to be back at the Global Education Conference and really special for me because the, I was telling Steve earlier, the first conference I presented at was Global Education Conference back in 2011. And we found this conference online. It was, you know, we were willing to take this risk. We were a little nervous. We had just gone one to one with iPads in our little world school, our Montessori world school in Florida, and in that our students were taking risks and our parents were taking risks, we thought, you know, we want to share our story, and we got up, I think at like 4 a.m. our time, got to our campus at 5 a.m. and set up and had this incredible experience where I think we had about 15 global educators from all over the world, much like this today, uh, very reminiscent of that experience for me. Um, come and share, and from that moment on, it was just like fireworks. So I, I am thrilled to be back here and honored to share on our topic today of learning without limits and creating and customizing your own learn without limits story. Um, I'm also going to be sharing about my work I'm currently doing in my role as Director of Education Strategy with Participate. As Steve mentioned, Participate is a wonderful supporter of this conference and great things that are happening in global education um, generally. So as we progress, if you have a moment, a couple things you may need for this session. If you have them, if not, you can keep all your ideas in your mind or you can put them in the chat box. So two things you may need if they're close by, a pad of sticky notes and a sheet of paper and something to write with. So when you have that, we'll be set to go and I'll start. I just want to kind of outline what my objectives are today and I'm going to try and watch closely in the chat box too to answer questions. My goal is to make this as much of a conversation as possible. Um, I'm learning and growing with you along in this journey, so I appreciate you all joining in today. Three things I'd love to talk about is the participatory learning movement we're seeing currently in education and how that's impacting teacher identity. Um, the shift in role of what it means to be a teacher, I think, all of us here and all over the world are starting to see great things happen. It's an exciting time in education to be a teacher, so kind of diving into that. 
and then having a deep dive into the Participate PD ecosystem and platform. So I can share on that and what we're doing that's um, coming up that's really exciting. So first, let's take off one of your sticky notes. And in the upper left-hand corner, or you can do this on any paper or in your mind, I want you to write the letters HMW. So this is something we do a lot in our um, ideation processes at Participate. So how might we? And we could be anything here. It could be you as an, an individual educator. It could be your or learning organization, your school. It could be your community within your professional learning network. We is really defined on what you believe it should be. So how might we? And as we go through this session, just jot, jot down questions in the form of how might we as we go along. And then we can explore those a little bit as we go. So my Learn Without Limits story started many, many years ago. Uh, when I, in 1996, when I was a 20-year-old graduate of the University of Florida as a speech-language pathologist, I moved back to my hometown where I was a, a fourth-generation Clearwater resident. I pretty much had stayed in the state of Florida for my whole learning existence. Um, and when I came back, I went and worked in one of the schools I had been in early on. And so as a, a new, fresh grad, I remember feeling at the time when I arrived to that first classroom, as many of you may have as well, I had tons of knowledge, feeling so prepared. I remember the things on my mind um, that I was highly focused on were things such as beautiful bulletin boards. I wanted to have the best bulletin boards out there. I wanted to make sure my filing cabinet was perfectly curated with tabs and organized alphabetically. And so that was my big focus that first year. And though I look at those days in my career, many of them as those signpost moments in my life, and I've definitely um, evolved a lot since thinking a lot on uh, bulletin boards to, to bigger and, and grander problems facing our world, uh, I really view my teacher journey and my story starting many, many years before that. You see here, this, this is a picture of my great grandmother. And I said that I was fourth generation in my um, hometown. And so she started that love of learning for me. She was a high school English and Latin teacher. And she probably wouldn't have known it then, but the impact she was making on the classrooms that I would later attend and, and the, the students in those rooms that became my community of learners helped to not only define my story as a teacher, but she and many, many teachers with her, before her, after her, they're all part of that fabric of our Learn Without Limits story in education. So when I got into that classroom and I entered this career, I believed that when I was going through and looking for which pathway did I want to go as a professional, for me, education was that natural intersection of art and science. Teaching as a profession, I viewed it as this nimble space where I could vary my experiences. And for someone like me that grew up wanting to not only be a teacher, but I wanted to be an astronaut, I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to be a writer, so as a teacher, I could always reinvent. I could be a scientist. I could be a historian. I could be an inventor, an engineer, an athlete, an author, a leader. Um, but that one characteristic that always was defining me was a learner. So I could always learn. And uh, in my over 20 years now in education, I've had times where I moved more towards teaching literacy, and then more towards teaching social studies. So I was able to reinvent. And so I viewed it as the coolest job around. I was like, I got this great gig. And, and this is, I'm sure everyone else must feel this way. Um, <laughs> but as I, I soon found out, there was this single definition of the single story of how people thought of teachers. They, I saw this represented in movies, 
on how teachers were depicted. I read this in books about how teachers were depicted. The definition was what I was finding quite universal. And this became a mismatch in my mind. Um, and what I saw was this role of teacher that I had aspired to be my entire life was almost going through um, what I would see as an identity crisis. So I set out to, to change this in any way I possibly could. Um, as a young educator, I, you know, I had just left college. I was consumed by learning. And in, in my university program, my teacher prep program, I would, I remember spent hours and hours in the library gathering as much information, as knowledge as I could. And then when I left that and went into my classroom, that all I found quickly stopped. So I wanted to continue to be a lifelong learner in any way I could. So I was participating in any PD experience that I could find. Now we have things online like Global Education Conference at our fingertips. But 25 years ago, this just did not exist. So I was seeking out these experiences and, and finding them any place I could. Um, soon after, I found my partner in learning, Fran Syracusa, which many of you may know her. And though I came from a background in literacy and teaching English, and she was a Spanish teacher in my school, and we didn't necessarily have these natural connections that were apparent at first, we both had this drive to connect our students with students of the world. So global education was that connector for us. And we said, let's do this. Let's take our students from Florida and connect them with these new iPads that we have and find ways. So really different back then. If any of you were doing things like Skype back in 2010, 2011, really tricky because you first had to connect with, a, you had to find a school, which wasn't as easy as it is today when you would just go on Twitter and say, you know, who's in Mexico? Who's in Vietnam? And you have many people respond. Um, so you had to find the school. Then we had to find a school with re reliable Wi-Fi and with a teacher that was willing to take a risk with us. And so, you know, we, it was, it was complicated and it was energizing and it was wonderful. Um, so this became our professional development that we were creating on our own. And so when I transitioned into administration and I said, all right, we need to make, you know, we're talking about access to great learning experiences for our students. We need to create pathways that our teachers have access to these. So our school is wonderful and committed to professional development, so we were sending our teachers off to conferences. Um, oftentimes, we would have a small group of teachers raise their hand and say, yes, I'm, you know, I'm the one I want to go. And so we'd send them off, and we'd hope they'd come back and bring back this new knowledge and share in things like faculty meetings. But time is always a challenge. So we weren't able to necessarily do that. So when we talk about professional learning being equitable, we had a small group that was benefiting, but the masses within our, within our school were not necessarily having that. Um, also, I was seeing a challenge with impact on student learning. So our students um, had teachers that maybe would go off to conferences or we'd do book studies, and we weren't necessarily seeing um, impact on student learning. So, so I was, you know, questioning this often and thinking about this um, a great deal of time because going back to this identity crisis teachers were having and what I saw in our profession, how could we, through equitable forms of professional development, reinvent this teacher identity, keep good teachers in the classroom feeling successful, um, retention, in our schools, um, this is a, this is an area we need to focus on. So, in my um, in my role as a professor at the university in my area, I have teachers or pre-service teachers coming. So my students, they are they are charged. They are ready. They have worked so hard to get into these classrooms, and they're brilliant and strong. 
So how can we, once they get into their classrooms of the future, how can we keep them there? How can we support them in their professional journeys as lifelong learners? So um, after lots of thinking on that, I um, and recognizing that this role of teacher is shifting and transforming as educators view themselves, you know, they're, they're defining themselves in different ways. So they're innovative designers and they're co-constructors in this process of global learning. And we're starting to see over the years, they're building capacity and improving their craft to champion these students through spaces such as online conferences and Twitter chats and ed camps. So we'll talk a little bit about that more today. Let me check here in our chat box and see if we have any questions. It looks like we're good. So where are we now and where are we going? So a big component for me uh, in, in answering these how might we questions is giving, so when I do this, when I go through this process of how might we and I wonder and ponder on these, on these big issues in, in education, um, we need to also be giving ourselves space and time for reflection. So thinking, where are we now? Um, where are we going? So if you, uh, if you have your post-its or your, your notepad, what I'd like you to do first is write down, uh, when you think of professional development, and we've done this um, on our team as we've uh, done some design thinking work on, on the experience of learning. So if, if PD as it stands today, current model of professional development that you know, the traditional model, if we personified that and made PD a person, what are some words you would use to describe that person? So as you think of things in your mind and you may want to write those down, we've, we have taken time, um, a big part of the work we do in, with Participate is interviewing educators. So over the past eight months, we've talked to many superintendents and tech directors and classroom teachers and said, you know, ask them these questions. And we had some of these answers recently. So you can see here, um, a lot of answers, these actually were from two weeks ago, and uh, they're always interesting. So boring, unavoidable, uninteresting. I also get great responses um, that are positive too. So expert, authority, um, this person, when they view traditional PD as a person, they have knowledge they want to impart. Uh, but you can see the one up in the, the center in the blue. I thought that one was very interesting. So an old man sitting in an armchair and smoking a cigar. So you see everyone has these different views on what PD is currently. So then if we were to do that same exercise, uh, thinking of PD, the best PD ever, um, you know, if you, you're the best professional learning that would get you, and what we say is on fire, on fire about learning, you can't wait to jump back into your classroom on Monday and bring these new ideas to your classroom, um, what does that person look like? How would you describe this person? And a lot of times when I ask these two different questions to the same group, I get very, very different answers, um, as, you, as you can imagine. Um, I see here answers in the chat, chat box. Um, personalized, privileging, teacher voice, hopefully inspiring, creative, connected. <laughs> PD for me is best on a tropical island. I can attest to that during my time in the Caribbean. <laughs> so these, these are, it's very personal. So everyone has these different ideas of what the best PD ever would look like for them. Last week I was at a conference and I was able to share this question with an audience of teachers. And um, you see here James Dean, he, is, he works with a company called Thinking Maps. And he was a participant in my session. And so he was capturing these ideas that people were sharing and, and, and telling out as we went through. And he captured them in this thinking map that I didn't see until after on Twitter. So I kept that. And you can see here a lot of those words that we're seeing here in the, in the chat box. 
empower. So I see Kim saying empower even twice. PD that empowers me to empower the student. Stephanie um, also saying these words as well. So this is the ideal PD, what he said in his center circle here. So how can we, how might we, if we go back to our how might we, how might we get there? So we look to research. Um, Frontline Research and Learning Institute did a five, a comprehensive five-year study, and they looked at um, PD events for 3.2 million PD enrollments uh, with 100,000 teachers. And what they found after a lot of review that only 20% of these learning enrollments met criteria for quality. So if we think on that, and how did they define, so my next question then was how did they find, how did they define quality? So they define it in these ways. Um, first off, is the learning is sustained and intensive. So when we think of PD um, that we currently receive, um, you know, and I think of receive, often that's been in my PD journey. Um, so it's a one-time event. And so how can we instead then, you know, sustain an intensive, how can we go very narrow, um, highly focused maybe on one or two areas instead of 30, and go deep, have a depth of knowledge on these topics. Um, things like collaborative. So are, they, are these learning experiences peer supported? Are they globally networked? Are they culturally responsive? Um, job embedded, so they're part of our practice with our actual students. Um, driven by data, are they supported by research? And are they focused on what we need to be focused on, our students? So how can we reimagine uh, PD to meet these changing needs of what we're seeing in our schools, in our districts, in our communities? around the world. Um, we see, so before I started um, having this great interest in professional learning, um, as a teacher, of course, my great interest was in student learning and what innovative things were happening in the classroom. So we think about classrooms and what, where we've come from, from and where we have gone to in the last, say, 10 years. And we have, classrooms look very different and they're still evolving, but they're flexible. We're, we're incorporating student voice and choice. We hear these words often. Um, and then when I go into a PD session at a conference, I'm placing the audience members back into rows and I'm standing at the front of the room and I'm talking to them <laughs> about learning space design. So again, this incredible mismatch of what we're seeing as great practice and an impactful practice with our students. But how can we translate that and customize these experiences for us, for teachers of the world? And we're starting to see things in these customized paths. So there's this blend. There's this balance. So we're taking things that are great. They're still really good. Formal professional development, district level PD. There's things that we're always going to need to learn. Um, mandated PD on things that, we're going to, that will support us as teachers in our individual areas. This needs to happen. Um, conferences are wonderful, on-site conferences, advanced degrees. Um, all of these are great, formal PD, but we're starting to see them blended with informal PD where teachers are taking charge of their own professional growth. So things such as conferences like Global Education Conference that are 24-7 accessible during the event, after the event, Twitter chats, ed camps, uh, teachers are expressing themselves through blogs and podcasts and mentoring, um, online courses and open educational resources. So teachers, like never before, are being empowered to be decision makers on curriculum. Um, I often think back when I first started teaching, back in those classrooms in the early days, and I was handed almost like a box 
my curriculum. Here is your curriculum. Go forth and um, and make it happen. And those days are, are are few and far between now. We're seeing teachers coming into their roles and they're being asked, you know, what ideas do you want to bring? What are your passions? What resources have you found that can best support this standard of practice? Um, so we as teachers are starting to seek this, these out and we're saying, well, then we need to be experts in our craft and we need to be critical consumers of information and we need to find our way through this together. Uh, as we think too, so you, you know, you look at this study and there's other studies um, similar that I can share with you as well. Um, and we say, all right, so if we're thinking 20% of this massive, um, this massive group of PD experiences, only 20% meet this criteria for PD. I view this as opportunity. This is a, an incredible opportunity for us um, here as global educators, you know, from the bottom up, the grassroots movement, and we can help and, and support our districts to rethink and take action on how professional learning is going to, to grow as, um, as we are too. So if you take your post-it notes and uh, your paper, so I want you to think on two things. Um, you see on the top line, think and feel. So um, the work we're doing currently with participate, so, you know, we're very strategic and very thoughtful and intentional in what we're doing on creating and uh, cultivating these learning experiences, bringing teachers together in collaborative spaces to work together on this. So what we're recognizing is not just how we want teachers to think, um, but also how we want them to feel. So if we go back to that concept on, of being on fire about learning, that's an emotion. Um, this is something that we feel within ourselves. So how, how might we um, reimagine learning for the professional educator um, to think and to feel differently? So if you think back on that ideal PD and what you want it to look like, you personally, your, your individual choice on what PD looks and feels like for you. Um, think about those words. And so I'm going to walk you through our, um, our platform. And so we're going to talk about four distinct areas. So chats, collections, courses, and portals. And so as we go through these four areas, if you want to, in addition to your how might we, um, just either put check marks or put words or images that you would connect to these different spaces and how those might support you or educators within your professional learning network to grow and develop as global educators. So before we jump in, um, just a little bit about Participate's theory of action. And this is, you know, this is related too to, to think and feel, but also we also um, need to connect to students. Um, so Participate's professional development approach, it's, it's framed along this theory of action where teacher learning uh, impacts classroom practice, which then impacts student growth. So um, participate also recognizes that there's dynamic learning that is taping, taking place currently in um, a lot of these informal spaces. So um, when we think of spaces like chats and ed camps and um, Voxer, if anyone's used Voxer, this is a, a great tool too, so you can have audio conversations. Um, so I, I think of Twitter almost as an entry point and then that can take you to the next conversation and maybe to, to blogging. So, so, you know, this is a, dyna a dynamic um, process where educators are not only discovering new learning, but they're also constructors of learning. Uh, and, and a lot of you, I mean, your experience going through this conference 
you're constructing new knowledge um, and what you're, you're taking information in, but you're also putting information out as we're going along. And as I've been seeing on um, the hashtag Global Ed 17 and, and the learning you've been sharing on what you've learned, it just it continues to, to spread out to the masses. So um, when you go to so participate.com, um, participate as a company is committed to this equitable and inclusive access to quality education um, through creating authentic learning experiences. So that's participate as a company. And so as a company, they have this platform. So this is participate as a platform. And if you go to participate.com, if you haven't logged in before, this is what you'll see is, oh good, Harvey was um, using it last night for our collaborative PD chat, which we're going to talk about. Maybe you could share it too um, in the chat box, Harvey, when we get to that. So you'll see this dashboard. Um, the first place I, I would tell you to go would be up in the right-hand corner, you're going to see um, where you can click on to build your own bio. So, and, and I'll share with you why I feel like this is so valuable and important as we go along. Oh, good, you're creating selections. So when we click on mine, here I've added, um, if you've ever been in a collaborative space before and you see the shadow of the person and probably not much information filled out on the bio, that's not, um, that's not supporting you or anyone else to have an understanding of where this person comes from, their areas of expertise. So I would definitely start there. Um, you see here, I've added my, my photo. And though we're separated by distance, maybe we've never had a conversation before, um, we start to have a personal relationship. We start to feel something. Uh, you can add in your, your bio, things that you're passionate about. Here I've listed, so by reading this, someone could come here and say, all right, here's Jen. Um, she's in Florida in the United States. She is passionate about things like literacy and global ed, um, collaborative PD, social good. These are areas she works in, classrooms, pre-K through 12. Here's a website I could go to. I could um, also click on, you would see collections of resources I've created. So if you're um, looking for something in the area of literacy and you want to come to my page, you can see it there. You can also see badges of courses I've created. So, so you can see just in this, just this snapshot, before you've even gone anywhere else, um, you can learn um, just by creating this bio and then you can share out yours. So I would definitely advise to start there. All right, so let's jump in to chat. We're going to go through these four areas, and we'll start with chats, one that is near and dear to my heart, because if you're on Twitter and, and love it like me, I just can't get enough. So um, if you, on the top toolbar, you'll see chats um, towards the end, and you, you select that, and it's going to take you to this chat page. So Twitter, I started in Twitter. Um, if, if Twitter is new for you, or some of those term Twitter chats is new for you, I had been hearing... Twitter, Twitter, Twitter for a long, long time. This was in 20, I think 2010 when I started in Twitter. And I was like, you know, this has, this has nothing to do with me. I, I, I know this is like a Kardashian thing. How can, this, how can this support me in my professional journey? And I was at a technology conference, and this is all every, everyone was talking in hashtags and at signs, which meant nothing to me. So I said, I better jump in. And um, Twitter has been probably one of the top forms of professional development of my entire career. Um, the amount of opportunity for learning that comes from Twitter is just extraordinary. So what Participate has done is capture that experience so it's connected to Twitter. However, it's within the Participate platform. So uh, it is creating, it's almost isolating the experience, so it's not, you're not having a lot of the other noise happening, and you can go and have a very pure chat experience. So if you click on chats, you're going to see these different options come up. So if maybe you're searching for a chat in the area of arts, or ed camps, or you're an elementary educator, or ed tech, um, you see here with the map, global, this is an area 
I um, personally, as being aligned with global education and always wanting to learn about global, this is an area I go to often. So if you click on global, then you're going to see it populates with all of these different chats that are related and connected to global education. Um, and you can, you can search there. You can see when the chats occur. Uh, you can learn more about the moderators of those chats. Uh, here's global ed chat. You can click on this. And you can see past chats, future chats. I could send a direct message to Heather Singh Master. She, she is the moderator. And when I'm participating in those chats, I can also curate resources. So as teachers are sharing out great websites or great lesson plans, I can capture those right in the moment and keep it going. Um, as Harvey mentioned, this is collaborative PD. So he was uh, a participant in our chat last night. And this is a chat we do once a month. So collaborative PD. And we're talking about this very topic. So we're saying, how can these informal uh, pathways to professional learning, learning support us as global educators? And last night, um, we, were, we were so happy to be able to present and share um, this chat and bring our chat participants that come to us every month to the Global Education Conference and then Global Education Conference participants came to our chat. So, so the learning um, just ex extended out. Um, so in, with, this is a, a, a screen capture of what that chat experience looks like. So a little different from Twitter, here I can pause the chat. You know, me as a mom, I, I'm in a chat, and then maybe my daughter um, needs me quickly for homework, so I can pause it and come right back. Again, I can curate those resources. I can have direct messages. Um, I see here Jose is um, wanting to use participate in higher education. So I can, I can share on my experiences with that. So I teach at the university. I'm using, um, so it's kind of dual purpose then, because I'm using participate in my own professional growth. However, I teach within the College of Education. So day one of my classes, I introduce my students, which are pre-service teachers, to participate. They create a collection, and I say, I tell them over the, you know, the course of the next 16 weeks, I'm going to be telling you lots of resources. And when I say, um, you know, try Kahoot, try Flipgrid, um, try World's Largest Lesson, instead of them keeping that in their mind or in loose notes that they may not be able to access years to come when they're in their, their future classrooms, then they're going to have a collection of resources that they can go back to. So that's another way. And there's so many um, other, other uses for participate with uh, higher ed, but those are, those are two for me. Um, this would be another example of how you can see within the Twitter chat experience on participate uh, the, the participants. Um, so then we go to collections. So collections of resources, which I, I see a lot of you are talking about in the chat box. This is, um, if you go back to the dashboard, you can see here this third tab of collections. So what are collections? Collections, um, you know, you think of, so now we talked about how as teachers we're coming into our, our classrooms and schools, and now we are active participants in creating curricula. We are seeking out new resources that can support our students to learn. And so where are we putting those? Um, this would be an example of a curated collection of resources that I prepared. And this one was on digital tools for collaboration. Um, just so happens to be <laughs> the same topic I talked about in 2011 for my first global education conference at 5 a.m. that morning many years ago. And so um, probably a lot of these tools that I shared then I'm still using. And different though, what I can do within the collection so you see here, I've added in tags. I've added in a description. You can see um, an icon of what that, so if Kahoot was something new for you, you see what it is, you get a description, you can click on it. If, if you were coming to my collection, you could save this resource to yours. But the part that I love the most is the uh, ability to collaborate with other educators within the platform. So, by managing collaborators, so like I could 
click that and I could invite in Kim, say. You know, Kim I know uses a lot of digital tools for collaboration. I could find Kim and say, will you join me as a collaborator? And then she can add in her favorite tools. So it's almost taking that concept of teaching teams within a school or professional learning communities, PLCs within a school, and putting it into an online environment for global educators. So educators from around the world I then can collaborate with. So you see here, um, I'm already collaborating on this collection with multiple people. Um, I could add in new people. And um, then I, if I wanted to create a new collection, it's as simple as you just select the tab, create new collection. I can add in resources. Um, I can um, add in collaborators, all of these different things with collections. Very quickly, um, we'll go to courses. So we've talked about chats, we've talked about collections, and those two different experiences can also feed into courses. So a lot of the courses on Participate, um, that will be an evidence of learning. So I saw in the chat box, how can these um, be used towards district level PD? So, so we take these learning experiences, and I talk to a lot of district level administrators, and they say, I recognize that my teachers are participating in, in ed camps, and they're participating in Twitter chats. They're having um, great learning come from these, from these experiences. However, my responsibility is to demonstrate and show accountability for that learning. How can we do this? So then we look to these next two areas of courses and portals. And so we start moving into a different conversation now of things like micro-credentialing and badging. So um, this, this fourth tab of courses, if you select that when you go in, you'll see that there are many courses that are offered through Participate. You can also, there's a, um, a space, you can take a course on how to author your own course. And um, so courses I would, I would suggest starting with, which probably a lot of people here in this conversation today have looked at, are the global goals. So connected to the United Nations um, Agenda for Sustainable Development, the 17 global goals, the SDGs, uh, participate has created courses. And actually, it's an entire ecosystem around it because they have courses. They have monthly chats around the SDGs, um, collections of resources. So it's all kind of tied together. So you can go into these courses. And um, you see here, there's, there's more. and um, and then you can see the badges that I have that are representative of the courses I've taken. And so you can take those and then throughout the process of um, learning, you're, you're citing evidence, you're submitting um, different forms. Maybe, maybe it's asking for you to participate in a Twitter chat. Um, like I know upcoming at the end of the month, this month is SDG 12. So if we're talking about SDG 12, you're taking the course and participating in that chat. So a link to that, um, that would be the evidence of your participation and evidence of your learning. So you see how it's starting to bring all of these different pieces together um, in one ecosystem or one space. I want to bring us to portals. So this is one of um, the newest features of the platform. And um, I have at the end of this presentation a link to the Teach Global Goals portal that I'm going to be showing. So if you go to portals, this, um, and then you're going to see in mine, I have multiple portals. So if you're participating in multiple portals, you'll see several. We're going to go to this Teach the Global Goals one. And you see here that you're going, it's almost like a space within a space. So this is a, um, a collaborative space of educators that have come together that all are passionate about the global goals. Um, probably of many, many of us here today, this is something we are really highly interested in. So Participate has done a beautiful job of bringing all of those resources together for us. So um, the home page is a carousel offering um, new, new chats, new collections, uh, new courses for you to look at right from the beginning. And then you go to the second tab, which is Learn. So this is where those free SDG courses would be um, housed that you could take. And there's choice. So maybe this week you want to learn about 
SDG 4, so quality education, or maybe you want to start with a general course of just what are the global goals, you can do that from here. And you can start one and you can start another and work, work through it at your own pace. So instead of it being a one shot, sit and get one hour disconnected um, PD event, so it's moving from event to experience. So this is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and to meet you where you are at and meet you in those goals that you put on those sticky notes on what does your ideal PD look like. Um, there's also collections of resources. So we talked about how you can make your own collections of resources. These are collected resources that um, of all of these different wonderful, so Global Goal 11. If you're interested in Global Goal 11, you want to go find some of the best resources out there, you can go and, and you can view those. You can make your own collection of resources using those. Um, and then you'll see here collaborators. So, I mean, there's, I think, 11 pages, <laughs> it looks like, of people that have joined into this portal on Participate, all passionate and um, focused on the SDGs. So at any time, I could click on any of these individuals. I could send them a message. We could have a, a discussion. Um, I could, like, let's say we, if we click on Kim, um, going back to how, what you learned about me and my profile at the beginning, I can do that with another global educator. So Kim and I, I know Kim from Twitter. We have not met. I follow what she does. I view her as an expert in the area of global ed. So in that she is an authority in this space. I could go, I could say, all right, here's Kim, here's things that she has done. I can go to her website. I can view um, the many collections she's created. Uh, so maybe I'm looking for fourth grade social studies of Europe uh, resources. I could go there and look at those that she has shared. I could also click on the badges that she's earned and looking at which courses she finds of interest because um, I value her as an authority in this area. Um, so that would be that would be how I could use collaborators within the portal. I could send Kim a message. Um, so you see here how we're able to use this collaborative space um, to not only gain information, but to construct our own knowledge and learning. So it becomes this authentic, dynamic learning experience um, for us as global educators. All right, so I want to leave a little bit of time at the end to, to answer questions, but I always like to end any presentation that I'm doing, any session that I'm a part of, I want to know, all right, what do I do now? So um, for me, the, and what I've really focused on in my journey as a global educator and as a global um, teacher is, so kind of, and I'll take it back to when I started working in global ed with my own students, I was doing a lot of awareness. Um, so, all right, we're talking about foods of the world and we're talking about cultures of the world. So we, we had um, a, a heavy focus on awareness, then kind of moved towards advocacy. Now I am hyper-focused on action. And that's where, I mean, we talk about the sustainable development goals. For me, this, um, and we say uh, a wonderful educator, Amy Rosenstein, had once told me she believes the Global goals are the glue. For us, that's the glue um, that will help us to, to reach what we want to do in our classrooms with students. So, and they provide that uh, path towards action. So, uh, also for me, action is what I want to do. So, these are the three things I, to do today that you could, you could jump right into after you um, leave this session. So, number one, participate.com. Build your bio, and you have got to be, just like when we're doing learning with our students and our students are at the center, you have to be at the center of your own Learn Without Limit story. So creating your Participate bio, really easy, it'll take you 10 minutes. Then um, become a global goals expert. And um, so this would be one area, maybe you want to have expertise in another area of interest for you. but 
Um, what I would recommend, and I, I know we're all here at the Global Education Conference um, super passionate about this area, so this would be one I'd recommend. And you can start with that portal. So this would be the portal. I'll also tweet it out. And so participate.com backslash organizations backslash teach. The, I think it's a global goal that's covered on my end. And you can visit that portal. That's, it's a free space. Um, if you're fine, if you want more information on what portals, how you can use them for your own school communities or your own PLN, I'd love to uh, continue that discussion. I would start there. And then amplify your story. So easy thing. So how I started my journey as a global educator, join a chat. Um, collaborative PD, you are, everyone has an invitation. You are all welcome to join us. Our next chat is December 20th at 8 p.m. Um, if you click on participate in all those chats, you can find other ones that are, are suited for your area of interest. Um, global Ed Chat on Thursdays, another wonderful one. Just a, a, an extraordinary community of connected educators that want to do great things for classrooms of our world. And the other um, way would be create a collection. Create a collection, invite a collaborator. Collaborator, invite me. I'd love to collaborate with you on a collection and learn about what you're doing in your classrooms. Um, and and just think that you know. I, I think of in, in my country alone. So I'm in the United States. In my country alone, there are 3.5 million teachers, and we uh, we are a force. And if we we come together and we have a, this uprising of sorts where we're saying we want to be a part of creating our own Learn Without Limits teacher story. We want to um, move away from one uni universal definition of what it is to be a teacher. We want to create our own paths. And then you can do that. And I think together as, as teachers, we, we can be that change. Um, last year I was, in, I had a, a, an extraordinary meeting with Ambassador Decima Williams at the United Nations building and we had this, this discussion of, of teach, what it means to be a teacher. And, and she said, you know, you, you all as, as educators have, have this, have this great chance. And, um, she goes, what I see is, is there's collaboration starting to happen. She goes, but what we need to do is we need to move from collaboration and we need to move to a point of solidarity. And, and this is what's echoing in my mind constantly. We need to come together. We need to come together as one. And, and we need to be loud in, in what we're doing. So I, um, I'm so thrilled you were able to join for this session. Again, I, I thank Steve and Lucy for creating these wonderful learning opportunities for us all. And I look forward to many to come. Um, please, please contact me. Um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter. I'm there all the time um, at Jen Williams EDU, and uh, you can also find me with the Participate team and visit participate.com. You can shoot a message there within the intercom, and and I um, I am so thrilled you're here and support you every step of the way in your journey as creating your Learn Without Limits story as an educator. So so thank you, Steve. I will pass it back to you. And um, hope you all have a wonderful last day of Global Education Conference. How fun. OK, so um, I'm, I'm guessing you didn't want to do any questions. We're, we're, this is probably a good time for people to move oh, on. Oh, we can. Yeah, that'd be great. So I think we have seven minutes. I just know in the past you've needed to end a little early so we won't get to the next session. But I am here as long as everyone um, else is. Did anybody have any questions? For Jennifer, I thought I saw one go by about credit for physical travel, and I'm sorry I didn't grab it at the time. Credit for physical, so like feel free first? to post in the chat again. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not going to do justice to the right, question. Right, right. I'm searching back through Steve, so if I, I see it, I'll back. jump on it. Um, does international travel for teachers count as PD? Do districts support mm -hmm. this kind of 
this type of initiatives as PD opportunities for their teachers? You know, that's a great question. And Going back to this tool, is there a place for teachers mm -hmm. to share about international travel? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, as I shared in the beginning, so international travel for me, so I was traveling with my students. Uh, it's going to be, it's so dependent, in my experience, and Steve, you probably have more knowledge than me, on your individual districts. And so what I always recommend, if teachers are looking to, if they're seeking out opportunities with inter, and international travel is part of their plan, it's going to district administrators and saying, here is, here is, um, here's my goal for the year. This is what I would like to, I want to become an expert in blended learning or flipped classroom or make or educate, whatever it may be. And um, these are the different experiences I would like to participate in. Um, to become an expert in that area, and if international travel, I mean, that's going to be a heavy lift <laughs> a lot of times on a district. Uh, but I, I would just start those conversations, and you never know, you know. The worst you'll hear is no, and, and maybe you'll hear yes. My guess is cost is a huge factor, but for those huge. of us who have lived overseas, we would also say there's nothing quite like it for changing your perspective. Mm -hmm. In yeah, some ways, I, I definitely here, here, what, we can open Pandora's we can open Pandora's box in the last one minute, right? In <laughs> some ways, global education is ultimately subversive, mm -hmm. right? Because you see perspectives outside of your own culture. Right. Yeah. I mean, I know what until so when I studied in books about. Um, like China, for instance, and what I expected schools to look like in China. Um, again, I had that, I had that, that viewpoint. Um, that was my point of view, my perspective. And, and traveling there and, and walking into classrooms and, and seeing that, what it really was, um, I was, I was astonished. And so, I think, and, and probably what you, your, your mission is too, Steve, is to, not everyone, not every student can travel the world. You know, I recognized that early on, that my, my students traveling to China and to Russia and to, to Spain, like this is very unique. And so, but what I also saw was that we could find ways to, to, to harness that, to bring that to students of the world, um, even if they weren't able to travel. So, and that's, I mean, I think that goes back to what we're doing here. I mean, just finding ways to connect, to create dialogue, share pictures, share stories. Um, so maybe it might not be the exact same experience as traveling, but we can get we can get pretty close. These are fun themes. I led group tours for four years for my university after I graduated, and I always said that the the best part of the experience was actually doing the work because mm -hmm. you were working with people in other countries, not just kind of visiting. And, and here, presenting is sort of that, right? It's the, it's the act of presenting and being a part of a community of people who are trying to help each other see different, different ways of doing things, different ways of connecting. Okay, we probably, we probably have maxed out our time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Okay, everyone. thanks, everybody. Thank you, Steve. Thanks to Jennifer. Thanks to participate. We've got uh, four great sessions coming up right now. Please check the calendar. Feel free to move on to one of those. We have one more closing keynote. And then we've just added to the schedule a final closing party, which is very short, but we do that at the very end. And that's at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Take care, everybody. Bye.